Hello everyone and uh, welcome to another lecture. Today we're going to be looking at Paul Gauguin's time in Tahiti. I've kind of subtitled this lecture Re-examining Primitivism. This was kind of the concept of why he went to Tahiti. He wanted to uh, find primitive cultures and kind of get re-in touch with uh, this kind of natural spirit, if you will, uh, and that type of ideology. Uh, he spends, uh, leaves on April 1st uh, and arrives um, in Tahiti and he stays uh, about three months in, in the major city Papayete uh, and then he kind of runs out of money and has to move out to one of the suburb cities Papayare or Papayari. Uh, my, my Polynesian's not a hundred percent wonderful and I apologize for that. Uh, around the same time that we have Gauguin there uh, actually very much in, in, in uh, sync with his second visit uh, Jules Agostini uh, of, an amateur photographer is also in Tahiti uh, so so what I've done is I've included some of his photography in with the lecture to give us a, a, a real view of what was going on in Tahiti at the time. Uh, we can already see a beautiful uh, landscape here and we'll notice in the foreground uh, a dock but we also have very western style buildings uh, uh, very much apparent. These white kind of uh, rectangular forms that we can see with triangular roofs dotting along the coastline there. Uh, again, when we need to remember that um, by the time uh, Gauguin gets there, uh, most of Tahiti doesn't look like this. Uh, it, it, it looks more, uh, a little bit more settled. Again, the missionaries had been there for quite a long time. Uh, and what we have Gauguin kind of moving into is a, uh, a very much a settled uh, uh, Tahiti. Uh, it's still very much uh, rural uh, by nature, but the idea that he's getting in touch with primitive people, uh, not so much. This is definitely what we would, would, would think of uh, uh, under the term colonialism. Uh, these people uh, have, had, had missionaries and, and various other people come to the island and uh, put them into missionary school and remove a lot of their native culture uh, and also put them in, in clothing that they saw appropriate. Uh, a Big Tree from 1891, this is one of the first paintings we have uh, by Gauguin when, when he arrives in Tahiti. Uh, in his early period, this is, this is known as his first Tahiti period, obviously, uh, it, it's very much an invigorated period. You can see a lot of energy in, in the work itself, a lot of detail. Uh, you can tell that he was very much overjoyed to be there and uh, thought that he was setting off on a grand adventure and a, and a grand new part of his life. Uh, when we look at this, we can see the vegetation is very much apparent, uh, the local Tahitian trees uh, and the thickness too. Again, if we look in the background, we can see the trees forming a solid wall of vegetation. Here we have, uh, again, a very Gauguin style of painting. And what I mean by that is when we look at the foreground, uh, when we see the water itself, this is really what he becomes more famous for. Uh, the term that, that is often used is cloisonism uh, from, the, from the French cloisonné. Uh, a good way to think of this is solid packets of color. Uh, I always kind of uh, I lend a, a, an instance over to stained glass windows. It's not quite the same process uh, as cloisonné, but what you end up with is, is these larger areas of solid tone color. And when we look at Gauguin's paintings, uh, this is very apparent. We see these uh, wonderful lines in, in, on, the, on the bottom of the screen. Uh, very much in that style. Uh, Black pigs and come here also from 1891. Uh, again, when we look at come here, we can almost see the 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 uh, the town that we were viewing from the photograph uh, from a different vantage point. Again, these very Western style houses that we have. Uh, with triangular roofs, white walls, and that type of thing. Uh, again, when we look at this, we can also start to see his application of paint. And uh, it's always important to remember that Pizarro, Camille Pizarro, was one of the people that he, he kind of drew inspiration from and was also kind of uh, actually directly taught by. So a lot of this earlier work, it kind of reminds me of Pizarro. Here we have another view uh, of, of Tahiti. Again, we're, we're kind of moving up the mountainside here and when we look down I imagine this is very much uh, uh, what the civilization looked like. Uh, we can see the coastline and we can see the western city uh, but as we move farther and farther back the, the, the towns uh, uh, buildings become more spread out and we see more and more of the vegetation. 
again, I remarked uh, earlier, uh, Gauguin spends about three months in, in uh, the center of town, the capital, and then he has to kind of move to the outskirts because he can't really very much afford to live in the center of town. Uh, he comes here uh, through a collection of money uh, uh, from various sources. Uh, here we have a wonderful photograph of, of the uh, inhabitants, or at least the European inhabitants of the time, uh, in one of these Western-style houses. He comes here uh, after... This is after the period where he, of course, lived with Van Gogh, uh, and also uh, he, this is past the point when he also lived in Brittany. Uh, uh, again, this is uh, the Tahitian period is really thought of as the end point of his life, the second half of his career. Uh, again, we can see the European influence very, very uh, clearly here in, in the style of the home. Uh, wonderful woodwork, but again, this is a, a European style house. Uh, with a little bit of a Polynesian kind of context to it. This is actually what we have uh, in terms of the locals, the Tahitians, and, and you'll automatically notice uh, that they're wearing European-style dress. Uh, this is something that was given to them. Uh, and in some of the instances, uh, it's not even that they're wearing European style dress. It's almost an Islander version of European style. Uh, but again, all of this clothing uh, uh, comes from France, comes from somewhere across the seas. Uh, it's not generated locally. Uh, again, by the time we get to this point and we see Gauguin uh, at this island, this is really at a point when, when uh, uh, again, most of what we think of as a native culture uh, is more difficult to find. We move into one of the paintings, and here we have uh, the rendezvous in the Vanilla Grove Man and Horse. Uh, in the foreground, and as we peek into the background there, we can see uh, a woman in white hiding uh, in the tree. Of course, the rendezvous makes it uh, seem have, have some sort of erotic association to it, make, makes it seem like they're meeting uh, for perhaps their lovers or that type of thing. Uh, even the instance of the horse, this is something that's brought over by Europeans to Tahiti. Uh, to my knowledge, there are no horses that are native to Tahiti. So when we look at uh, the primitivism that we're seeing from Gauguin, uh, this primitivism that he's displaying in these paintings uh, with the idea, of course, of sending these back, uh, we look at things like this and we see that what we're really witnessing through his paintings uh, is the colonialism that is being uh, uh, impressed upon the Tahitian people. Uh, over here on the left, melan melancholic would be the painting on the right, excuse me, and then underneath we have uh, We Hail Thee Mary. Uh, some of his paintings, of course, do have these Christian connotations to him. He kind of takes these Christian ideologies and in some way puts them into uh, Tahitian subject matters. He does this a little bit more on his second trip to Tahiti than his first, but uh, we notice the clothing that she's wearing, this bright red outfit. Uh, this is something along with this pink dress uh, that we will see repeated again and again. Here we have, uh, again, examples of the people who would be there in the European style of clothing that's kind of been put on them. Uh, in my mind, uh, if we look at the woman on the left, uh, it is a black and white image, but that, that clothing would be red. We see this kind of red floral pattern uh, along with a white top repeated again and again. And it might even be the instance uh, that the gentleman on the right might be wearing this pattern as well. I've noticed this pattern kind of reappearing uh, in his in his paintings, and it would lead one to believe uh, that again the locals that he would see uh, would be wearing this clothing type. Another view of the locals, and again European. This is uh, the males, and again you can see button-up shirts and trousers. We have a nice white picket fence in the background. So uh, I, I imagine in some instances when Gogan is coming to this site that uh, it is kind of a comfortable way for him to explore uh, this aspect of the primitive nature as, we, as, as he associates it. Again, uh, in the contemporary, the word primitivism we don't really use. It's almost a, a negative term, and we look at the ideology uh, that the people had of this time period as almost being immoral by contemporary standards of looking at cultures other than our own and thinking of them as being primitive just because they're different.
Here we have, again, we have a, very much a, a Europeanization of, of the Tahitian people. Here, uh, it would be hard to recognize this as being a Tahitian class if, if you didn't look at the faces of the children uh, and also what was occurring in the background. But again, this would be one of the local uh, missionary schools. Those women uh, in the black would, would most likely be nuns. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that that would be uh, their occupation as well. So uh, as I mentioned, he comes to this site, but he doesn't really, uh, at least in my opinion, fully embrace the culture. He learns about the culture, uh, reading about it through another French author, who wrote about the culture. Here we have the local school, uh, and I, I really do enjoy this image because if you look in the background, uh, we do have an example of architecture that we would associate with the locals. This looks to me much closer to the images of, of Tahitian architecture that we see even dating back uh, past uh, or, or previous to the point of the missionaries, uh, going back to earlier examples of explorers uh, that visited the island and, and the examples that they're giving of what they saw. This is the style of, of, of long house that you would kind of have. Again, it, obviously using the local materials uh, rather than just constructing simply out of wood. Uh, again, when we look at this, the school, we see this Europeanization. Uh, back to Gauguin, it feels like we're kind of switching back and forth here. Uh, this is actually a very famous portrait that he did, the portrait of Suzanne Bambridge. Uh, this was a commission that he received uh, from a, a, a family while he was in uh, uh, Tahiti trying to generate money. And from my understanding, it was not extremely well received. Uh, I'm not even 100% sure that he received the money from the commission. Uh, he didn't really just have a good lot of things when he went to Tahiti. I, I think that he thought it was uh, automatically going to be paradise, but as I mentioned, he quickly ran out of money, had to move kind of out of the capital part of town. Uh, uh, and, and we can kind of see this semblance, at least in my mind, with paintings like Road in Tahiti, where we kind of see ourselves traveling uh, away from the town in terms of the painting off into the distance. And maybe this is uh, uh, his way of kind of saying goodbye and showing us where he's actually moving to. Uh, again, it's interesting how he paints people uh, within the series. It, it seems like there's kind of two different scales that are working. It's either this landscape scale where they're very small uh, or they're so incredibly large within the dynamics of the canvas uh, that there's really almost nothing else within it. Uh, if we look at this, we look at the usage of color too, very vibrant. Here we have an example of, of again, this close-up where uh, it's almost difficult to register them being in a background because they, they consume so much of the, the pictorial space. Uh, even this woman, uh, the woman on the left, is uh, even edging her way outside of, of what we think of as the canvas plane. Uh, here we have this red and white uh, color combination that I mentioned uh, and this pink European style dress that we did see from a previous portrait. When we look at his work uh, in Tahiti, we will notice these two outfits kind of coming and going, reappearing over and over again uh, within the subject matter that he's painting. So I imagine uh, this is a lot closer to where he, the style that he was, uh, of, of house that he was living once he moved out of the capital city again. Uh, and in between with, uh, again, the people seem very small. There's nobody all the way in the foreground. And they always seem to be, it's a little bit of a distance from us, uh, uh, almost as if we're observing them as we're passing by, uh, not exactly engaging with the people, uh, but rather just kind of seeing them in a fleeting moment.